Okay, good evening, and wel welcome to the Williston DRB uh, meeting of May 23rd, 2023. I'm Pete Kelly, I'm chair of the DRB. Uh, are there any Zoom participants? No. No, okay. So we're not gonna worry about changing the participant toolbar name. Um, this is a hybrid meeting taking place in town hall and on Zoom. All members of the board and public can communicate in real time. Planning staff will provide, will not provide Zoom instructions tonight because there are no Zoom participants. Uh, all votes taken in this meeting will be done by roll call in accordance with the law. Um, let's start the meeting by taking a roll call attendance of DRB members participating in the meeting. Uh, Nate Andrews. Here. Paul Christensen. Present. Lisa Braden Harder. Here. Dave Turner. Here. And the chair is present. Uh, five in attendance. Uh, so we do have a quorum and we need four uh, to, uh, to pass. And that will be applicable when we uh, approve the May 9th meeting minutes, as I will be abstaining from approving the meeting minutes. Uh, okay, so tonight's agenda. We've got, uh, well, first we've got a public forum. Um, if there's anyone in the audience that would like to address the board on issues that are not on the agenda, uh, do so at this time. Okay, hearing none, uh, we'll hop, hop right into the public hearing section. Uh, first up is DP 23-15. This is a pre-app for Lakeside Electric. If the applicant would please come forward to the table and uh, once you get settled in, uh, please state your name and address for the record, please. Mark LeClaire, uh, South Billington, 20 Oak Creek Drive, or do you want? No, that's fine. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, Darlene LeClaire, South Burlington. Great. Thank you and welcome. Uh, staff goes next. That's me. Uh, so this, this is a request for pre-application review to construct an industrial building uh, in the Industrial Zoning District West. It will be used for uh, contractor storage with ancillary offices and a mezzanine floor. It's currently occupied by a uh, non-conforming uh, residential home um, and it is uh, surrounded to the north, west and south by industrial properties uh, and to the east by a sort of mixed-use residential property with a um, warehouse to the rear. Uh, we are recommending approval with recommendations. Uh, the DRB should just uh, review the recommendations. Uh, in particular, check they're happy with the landscape buffer uh, suggestions and then allow the project to proceed to a discretionary permit. Uh, we did not receive any public comment on this application. Uh, we anticipate compliance with the dimensional standards for the industrial zoning district west in terms of height uh, setbacks and lot frontage. Uh, we also anticipate compliance with uh, access and uh, connectivity requirements of uh, Chapter 13. Uh, in this case, we're not recommending a traffic study because uh, industrial and commercial uses don't generate many trips. Um, however, we are recommending that they just provide uh, uh, some traffic generation data with the discretionary permit. Uh, the applicant is proposing 10 parking spaces. Um, as you probably know, in, uh, the uh, parking standards for industrial uses um, provide the DRB with a lot of flexibility in setting them. Uh, they give us a starting point of one uh, space per thousand uh, square feet, uh, which would generate a suggested eight parking spaces, so they are slightly above that, um, which uh, we find acceptable. Uh, we're also including a recommendation that they meet the bike parking standards uh, for an industrial building. So that's for short-term spaces, uh, some long-term spaces, and an end-of-trip facility. Uh, and that, that end-of-trip facility will be available to both tenancies. 
Uh, this is a two-tenant uh, building. Uh, we've got some fairly typical recommendations on undergrounding the utilities, uh, identifying snow storage and providing solid waste containers uh, per the rec uh, regulations. Uh, so the landscaping requirement, um, that's the east boundary. Uh, so you can see the existing garage to the residential home on the right. Uh, and to the left is the adjoining property, which has the residential home at the front uh, and the warehouse at the rear. Uh, so the pre-app plan shows um, a 13 foot wide buffer to that boundary, uh, which isn't permissible uh, between a residential and an industrial use. Uh, so the sort of the narrowest buffer they ca could have would be a type two dense planting, uh, which is 23 feet in width. Um, if they provide a screening fence, they can reduce that by a further 25% as long as it's five and three quarters feet high, which means that they would end up with a uh, 17 and a quarter foot uh, buffer, um, which would necessitate some minor adjustments to the site plan, but we're confident they can probably do that. Uh, the fence would also block uh, headlights uh, from the parking area into the neighboring residential property. Uh, and that sort of approach of uh, mediating between industrial properties and uh, residential properties is consistent with what the DRB uh, has applied in terms of both the regulations uh, but to other industrial proposals elsewhere uh, that are next to residential homes. Uh, some typical recommendations on street trees. Um, just to point out, it is mapped as uh, a habitat area, but um, clearly that's an error because uh, it's a driveway and some lawn, uh, so we're confident there'll be no undue adverse effect on habitat. Uh, and then lastly, I just want to make point because this is uh, a multi-tenant property, uh, the discretionary permit does need to include a master sign plan, and essentially what that does is it just sets out how the signage is going to work uh, for the site as a whole and both tenants. Um, saves everyone a lot of time uh, if it's done with the discretionary permit. Uh, and I've got some, I can always send you a relatively simple example if you need that. I don't know if you've done one before. Uh, so what follows is a recommendation uh, to allow this to proceed to discretionary permit uh, with detailed recommendations as shown. Thank you. Okay, thanks Simon. Okay. Um, this is your opportunity to comment on the staff report uh, before we, we open it up to questions from the board members. Uh, one thing that I would like to hear from you is your position on the proposed conditions of approval, specifically the landscaping, and uh, if you're in agreement with uh, what has been proposed by staff as a condition of approval. But with that, I'll turn it over to you. <clears throat> well, we're new. <laughs> <laughs> it's, that's fine. So that's fine. <laughs> just, just take, no, just lower your blood pressure and, yeah. and really the issue here is the landscaping. And, uh, you know, if you, if, what I would like to hear is that, um, is that you'll, you'll submit uh, at discretionary permit a compliant landscape plan. Absolutely. And, and if you say that, then I, I think the questioning is probably going to be pretty minimal. No. <laughs> yeah. And so is so that's a yes, a thumbs up. That. That is a yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. Right. Um, so are there any other conditions that have been proposed that um, that you have concern with, or would like to draw to our draw, have a discussion about? The the signage that you were talking about. Yeah. It, you, are you talking about on the building or? Uh, both, so th it regulates all signs, so signage on the building, all signs, uh, and if you're proposing to have a freestanding sign at the access, uh, it would also regulate that. But you just said that n now is a better time to do it than uh, around. You, you need to submit it with a discretionary okay. permit. Okay. Um, but it, it's, this is a relatively simple one for, to do it on. Just that, that will not be a heavy lift, and staff will provide you with a template to follow. Okay. And uh, yeah, and your architect will do 
do that in his sleep. <laughs> so right, and as uh, far as lighting, what do you want, what would you like to see as far as lighting? You don't want to see spotlights all the way around the whole place, I'm sure. Um, there's, uh, there's a full lighting section uh, in, the, uh, in the regs, and we expect you to follow them. And he um, loves he loves answering those kind of questions when you need to know about lighting. And and <laughs> okay. you know and 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 uh, you know um, your 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 architect will will know what to do. Would you, would you have a question? Uh, first uh, first uh, identify oh, yourself, please, uh, for the record. Robert Jack, the architect for the college. And address, please. Uh, Fifteen hundred seven Point Road, North Hero, Vermont. Welcome. So my, my comment was, you know, while the product is similar to these, we usually have, I saw them on, the, on, on my elevations of the building, downlights attached to the building, and we have parking lot lights on a pole with downlights as well, because they don't light up the sky. And so I'm kind of familiar with the electrical company. That, so I think they're pretty much. Um, we got lights. <laughs> and they're motion detected, so they go off at, at the specified hour. Yeah. 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 I'll jump in with one other thing, and they can stop me if I'm wrong. This build, these buildings will probably not be occupied at night. They're daytime uses, electricians, mechanical contractors, plumbing contractors, public tenants, the tenants are tenants in this building. So if they're coming in the morning to pick up the materials, go out on jobs, come back during the day, download the materials, they pick the materials up and take them to the home where they then will leave the rest of the next morning to the job site. Yep. So it's strictly not a night time orientated thing. So lights to be on the building would strictly be for security and to be on timers, timers and motion detectors while I'm off. That's that's great, and uh, you know, but just but just make sure that you read the uh, the chapter that pertains to it and, I, I've and never comply. Seen this, and this the objectives I got were so amazing that they actually gave me the sections. I mean, I'm, I'm familiar with that in sections, but they actually gave me the sections so I could just follow through and go through it. Thank you. Step yeah, up. yeah, and uh, to just sing the praise of of uh, our staff here in Willston. They're accessible. They're there to help, um, and uh, and the feedback that we get from developers and other applicants is is very positive. So so use that resource, um, and uh, and and that just streamlines the whole the whole discretionary permit process. Uh, so so with that, I'll turn it over to DRB members. Paul, is there a reason that you're having first floor windows? The only reason I ask that is because being a Security. business like, yeah, being a business like that, I mean, you know, the second story windows, they might provide a little light coming well, in. The like I said, it's an open two-story uh, building at the level. We have not finalized the plan of revenue for that yet. Um, when I first was submitting this, they didn't even mention their separate estimate operations and stuff like that. I had them. So I yeah, I would, just men I would just mentioning is that if you suddenly said you didn't want any windows on the first floor, nobody would say anything about okay. it. Uh, DRB members, any questions? This may be a staff question, but the, it, in our conditions here, um, the fence, can you describe what type of fence? I, I think earlier you said a screening fence, which is more clear, but in the conditions it just says fence. Is that, is that yeah, solid? Yeah, so or? it would need to be a solid fence, okay. I think. Um, the, one other, the, the one with the strips? Yeah, other developers have done like a tongue and groove. Okay. Uh, close boarded is what I'd call it. Okay. So no gaps. You guys okay with that? Yeah. I guess. <laughs> We're in the yes mode. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, to the from the perspective that we might chain the fence with slats in it, would that be permitted as well or no? No, that, that doesn't sound like that would provide the screening. It needs to be pretty robust. Well, um, if this is if this is a not if this is a non night operation. Mm. Well, that, that it, it does it doesn't matter. Oh, okay. Yeah. Doesn't matter because because we're we're not gonna we're not gonna restrict. The okay, use. I see. Yeah, and okay. and then it could be the business could change. Yeah, in case you get an employee that wants to work twenty four seven. <laughs> is there is there windows on that end of the building? On the neighbors? Uh, there, there are windows any? facing the property. There are. Yeah. But you, you, you also, just to point out, you also need the fence in order to have a narrower buffer. 
So the fence does two things. Uh, it blocks the headlights, but it also allows you to have that narrower buffer, because otherwise you'll be looking at trying to find additional uh, feet uh, on the ground. So if you have the option of fencing, less buffer, or, or just more buffer, no fence? So the fence is for two reasons to prevent headlights and to narrow the buffer. Both of those, re both of those reasons are applicable on their own. But that's what I'm saying, but am I understanding this correctly that you can have a privacy fence with a lesser landscape buffer for a larger landscape buffer and no fence? Just like for the options. Uh, in a situation other than this parcel, yes. It, <coughs> it, uh, it's possible to do what you're describing. Uh, but you would need to reconfigure your parking lot and your in your parking space. Yeah, yeah, you could. That, that is an option, but uh, yeah. but it wouldn't work on as as drawn now. But that's your that's your choice. It, it's not that's not the garage side of the house. Uh, it it doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It, it, that's that's. I, I don't want to go down that path mm. uh, respectfully. Because yep. um, because it, it just doesn't matter. It, it could there could not be an a how there could not be a window in that house, and it would still apply. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's not there's just there's not a condition, you know, contingent upon headlights going into. It, it's that's not the way this works. You're right. Like your yeah. neighbor's property. There's also a window. Right. Right. All right. <clears throat> Any other questions? Thank you. Um, <clears throat> just being new at this and just talking to constituents that I know and people that are in the real estate development, do, do you foresee me needing any sort of civil engineering uh, evaluations for any of this, for the parking or anything like that? I'm going to let I'm going to let Simon answer that. Uh, n normally, we we would expect some level of details provided to satisfy public works. Um, you'd also probably want to check with your architect as well about um, providing that okay. level of expertise to support his work. Um, but we would expect uh, details um, at public works. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you, we typically see civil engineering drawing, drawn site plans with, uh, um, with, with some type of stormwater management, mm -hmm. um, uh, catch basin, Inlet, inlets defined, um, snow, snow, snow plowing, um, where you, snow storage, where that's going to be. I mean, that's typically done by a civil engineer um, and not an architect. Aren't that things very schematic? What's that? Not yeah. Required. No. Required. Required. And and staff can. Okay. Staff can. Uh, ar your architect probably has relationships with civil engineers uh, or staff can provide you with some um, options if if uh, if needed there's uh, there's several of them that are um, that we see frequently here in Williston and uh, and Simon can help you with that yep thank you any other questions no thank you we're good we're guys good. Uh, DRB members. Okay, uh, it's 7:23. Uh, I am going to uh, close DT 23-15. Thank you very much for coming, and I and I encourage you to reach out to staff and because uh, they're very helpful. They have been so great. Good. I guess if I'm going to do this for the first time, <laughs> can't think of a better partnership with this city. So I appreciate uh, you That's hearing us great. tonight. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you. Thank you. So the uh, the DRB will approve their minutes in three weeks' time, and after that, you'll get a notice, a decision uh, that will just memorialize all these recommendations. And at that point, we come to you with our final. You'll be inclined to vote it. Yeah, for your discretionary permit, and you'll you'll come to another hearing here. Yeah. So we're so and we're going to bring lots of and bring lots of diagrams. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna we're gonna vote we're gonna vote on this tonight, but it's not ratified until the next meeting. Okay. And uh, which is June? What is it? Thirteenth. Thirteenth. Yeah. 
at that point, if you're looking for a search of the 913 item sheet, you're far enough away. No, no. So, so the way this works is um, it's a, it's a two-stage process. Um, there's, we're, we're in the pre-application tonight, and then um, you will ultimately uh, submit a discretionary permit, which will have more detail, civil drawings, as an example. Um, and basically what this pre app conditions of approval, um, those conditions you need to incorporate into the discretionary permit uh, application. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Does it bring back to this board is that? That's coming back to this board. Okay, that's what I Yeah, okay. it's coming back to this board. Okay. And uh, and again, you know, as as you digest what happened tonight, um, you know, staff can can help you through that process. This I mean, is a pleasure. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I, I relocated here 15 years ago from New York City. They're not a user friendly. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, well, thank you. We, okay. we, thank you, Peter. David. Oh, okay. Good night. Okay, ERB members, um, from my perspective, we do not need a deliberative session. No. Everybody in agreement? Okay. Uh, do I have a volunteer? Uh, are there any amendments proposed for um, staff's proposed conditions of approval? I have none. I'm good with it, please. I'm good. Okay. Who's the volunteer to read it? Is the, fe is the fence thing specific enough? I mean, they know now, so it's fine. I think it's fine, right? Uh, no, let's, I'm kind of curious going no, let's, forward. Let's, let's change that. Okay. That's a good point. So the, uh, the bylaw says an opaque fence. Um, so we could include the word opaque. Um, it's, so it's uh, 2E is the recommendation. Yep. So added, a, added this item uh, J on the list of the discretionary permit. Number two, recommendations. I think you said modify E. Yeah. Oh, okay. Just add opaque. That's even better. Oh, it's there. Just, just yeah, just add add the word opaque in front of fence. That's it. Okay. Uh, so with that, uh, with that amendment, who is the volunteer? Nate, hey, you gonna do it for me? Sure, I got yeah. it. You, you brought okay. that up. So when I make that motion, I just say with, what do I do again? I make so a motion and then you, say. You, you make a motion and uh, at the end of reading uh, the motion language, uh, you say we are going to modify 2E as follows. Okay. That's all you have to do. Read the whole thing? Yeah, the whole E? Read okay. the whole thing. Cool. Sounds good. Thanks. All right. So uh, do I have a motion for DP 23-15? Yes. Uh, as authorized by WDB 6.6.3, I, Nathan Andrews, move that the Williston Development Review Board, having reviewed the application submitted in all accompanying materials, including the recommendations of the town staff and the advisory boards required to comment on this application by the Williston Development Bylaw, and having heard and duly considered the testimony presented at the public hearing of May 23, 2023, accept the recommendations for DP 23-15, and authorize this application to move forward to discretionary permit review with one modification to of the recommendations and motions item 2e will read as follows a landscape plan in compliance with wdb 23 including a type 2 buffer supplemented by a type 3 buffer and opaque fence along the property line with 332 shunpike road thank you nate is there a second i'll second uh, is there any discussion? Hearing none. Uh, yay or nay? Nate? Yay. Paul? Yay. Lisa? Yay. Dave? Yay. Motion. Uh, the chair is a yay. Uh, five in favor, none opposed. Motion carries. Okay, is there a motion to approve the meeting minutes of May 9th, 2023? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as written. Uh, 
Monday night, 2023. Thank you, David. Is there a second? Okay, Lisa seconds. Uh, any discussion? Okay, uh, yay or nay? Nate? Yay. Paul? Yay. Lisa? Yay. Dave? Yay. Uh, and I'm going to abstain because I was not a member of the DRB board that evening. Uh, so that's four in favor, none opposed, one abstention. Motion carries. Is there any other business to bring forth tonight to the DRB? Nope. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you all.